Hello. Hello, my beautiful kings and queens. Hello, hello, hello. So, as you all know, I had that long day of doctor's appointments on yesterday. And I wanted to come on and tell you how my long day went. Ooh, but I was tired. Um, my first appointment started at 7.15 a.m. And when we walked back into this house, it was 4.30 p.m. And um, I was supposed to be going to a group meeting with my fellow transplant recipients. And some of them are now waiting on a transplant. So we all um, have a group meeting every Wednesday um, at the transplant center. And I was still at the doctor. So, <coughs> excuse me, the pepper. <laughs> um, so I missed the meeting. And then um, I want to say once a month, we meet up to do lunch or dinner. And I didn't even make that. It started at five and I just couldn't make either one. But they had a nice time. They posted pictures and they all had a nice time. And I love when we meet up together and, you know, just share each other's journeys and everything. You, you can always learn something from someone else. So I'm having me a little snack, which is cucumbers. And I have some vinegar on there. And I also have I know you all remember this, Tajan. Y'all know our favorite girl was so hooked on this and she put it just about on most of her foods, but um, I don't put it on a lot of foods. I'm, I'm very picky when I use this and what I use it on. But yes, I was introduced to this a long time ago by Asha. And I know you all know about her Tajan. And so I have some of that on my uh, cucumbers. And I um, feel like I don't have enough on there. And I have just a little tad bit of vinegar, red vinegar, and black pepper. So instead of me picking up these, <laughs> I picked up these. Mm, my son done killed that bag. I had a few of them, but that's not a good idea for me. Mm. So, ladies and gentlemen, there's always a good way of eating healthy. Um, I was going to put some tuna with my cucumbers, but I don't want to be too full before dinner. So, and I'm not sure what my dinner is going to be quite yet, but something light. So let me explain about the doctor's office. I'm still trying to chew this up because my wisdom teeth in the back are gone. And one of these days, I'm going to have all that filled in. But I can't even go to the dentist right now because of the prednisone. Dosage. I have to wait till I get down to five milligrams to go to the dentist and before I can have an eye exam. 
and I had scheduled an eye exam, but it's a good thing I spoke to my doctors first. When I tell you they say speak to the doctors before anything, that's what you better do because I wouldn't have never thought about the um, eye exam situation, but I knew about the dentist. So, my first appointment was with nuclear nucle, nuclear medicines. Sorry. <laughs> and that's where they... It's a four-hour test, but in increments over four hours. You don't just stay in the test for four hours. So if who've had it before, they can understand how it goes. Your first hour, they take two pictures. Your second hour, they take two pictures. And the third and fourth hour is you wait two hours and you go take two more pictures. And the test is meant for um, to check and see how your food is moving from your your uh, I want to say from the stomach to the in, in to your uh, the intestines. But for some reason, mine have been moving slow. I did have a case of gastroparesis before my lung transplant, and they got it down to where I was able to get the transplant, and it has returned, and this test that I took yesterday came out worse than the one that I took before, but I'm on um, the TENS unit. Um, it's supposed to help break up that food as well, and I'm also on the um, the band that goes around my neck. I'm supposed to wear that after each meal for a certain amount of time. And then I'm supposed to sleep in it every night. Um, and that's supposed to help with my gastroparesis. And I'm also changing a lot of my diet around. Um, from now until about, for about 30 days, I'm going to be doing a lot of liquids. And I'm going to be doing some healthy smoothies. Um, even though, you know, people say smoothies are good, but some people don't understand. You can't put all this stuff in your smoothies and think it's going to be healthy. Because I've had a situation where I drank a smoothie and my, um, my insulin flew up so high because you got to watch what you put in it. So I'm going to be using a lot of kale and spinach and, you know, like half of the fruit. You want to put more vegetables in there than the fruit. Um, and if you're, just, if you're looking for that sweetness, you can also put a stevia in it. Stevia sugar or um, raw sugar. But, like, I mean, I'm talking one packet. No, you don't have to go overboard because fruits hold sugar. So you just got to be careful. And you can use a lot of berries in those smoothies. And I'm going to be doing a video uh, of some of my smoothies because I used I used to drink and make a lot of smooth make and drink a lot of smoothies before my transplant because as you know I was on my weight loss journey and um, now that's the one thing on gastroparesis why I gotta cut back on hard and heavy foods this might not even be a good idea but it's just a snack but um, I'm gonna be doing a lot of soups yogurt even mashed potatoes but more soft foods. And I'm going to come off the meat again and do fish, salmon, um, maybe crab meat, you know, something like that. But I'm not going to do any heavy meats like burgers and steaks and all of that. Um, I'm going to try my first 30 days out and see if how my stomach is going to feel. I don't have a problem with uh, my bowel movements at all, thank God. <laughs> um, but I'm starting to feel some type of aches in my stomach, so we'll, we'll get through that. And... Um, my GI doctor is the perfect guy. He's he's very good, and he just wants me to um, follow the orders with this TENS unit. Oh, and the razor band. That's what it's called, a razor band. And so now we were talking about my medications the other day, the other night, and a lot of people was praying that, um, that some of this medication goes away, and... 
I w- it wasn't that I was claiming the medication with my topic, so I'm sorry if anyone took the wrong idea, but we do have to watch what we say and how we say it because it did sound like I was just claiming to be on it all my life. But the thing is, the rejection medicine, in case you all didn't know, you will be on that for your lungs for a, the rest of your life or a long period of your life because that's what it's for, rejection. You don't just take those pills when you go on rejection. They're, they're preventative for rejection, even though you can still get it. But even yesterday, my doctors told me that that's a hard one to wean off of because that's what it's for, rejection. And I met a lady yesterday that had been had her transplant for 17 years, and she's still on her rejection medication. So yesterday they took me off of three of my medications. Um, one is permanent, and the other is for a few weeks. But then I turned around and got placed on another two or three medications, but that's only for 30 days. So, you know, some different vitamins and things like that to help with the healing of my um, wound vac. It's healed, but just to be sure. So, um, that's pretty much um, all I had to come in and say for now, but I'll be back with another video, maybe later today, and um, I thank you guys for stepping in and prayers and everything when they're desperately needed, and there's a smile, and I love you guys, I love you guys, I love you all. Have a blessed day.